Brought to you by DCP Player. Preview any DCP ad or trailer on any PC. For more information, go to dcpplayer.net. Brought to you by DCP Encoder. A cost-effective way for a cinema owner or content producer to go to the DCP file format. For more information, contact dcpencoder.net. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Paul Panabaker with Master Image. Uh, Jack, I think we need to charge more for this session next year. And, uh, take home some money for the ICTA. Today, uh, I'd like to try and apply my 20 or more years of uh, giant screen 3D film presentation and three years of digital 3D presentation experience into something that you can take back to your theaters in terms of getting your own 3D up to the top standards you'd like it to be. One of the nice things about digital 3D is that in 10 minutes we can cover most of the important and key items that relate to the 3D presentation quality from the theater operations perspective. Today I'm going to give a brief description of what uh, great 3D is and then help you understand some more about bad 3D and how to avoid it through a number of practical steps. As Bill described, the whole secret of stereoscopic 3D is to ensure that each eye gets the picture it was intended to see and without any problems. This is exactly what every 3D enabling system does. We've seen them all listed here several times. Systems synchronize or align their filtering systems so that the left eye gets a perfect image of uh, just the way the filmmaker created it from the left perspective. And the right eye gets a similar correct image with minimal or no crosstalk between them. Great 3D is clear and comfortable. One of the beauties of 3D cinema is you don't have to go any further than looking at your theater screen. Everything you need to know about how well you're delivering a great 3D presentation is right there in front of you on your own screen. If it isn't clear and it isn't comfortable, then you need to find out why. Bad 3D, as Bill kind of alluded to, um, is not widely discussed. Um, but, you know, one of the more important things about 3D is it really has to look great to work. Um, there really isn't a lot of middle ground for social 3D. Um, and if you're not, if you're in the social, you're quickly slipping into the bad 3D. Um, on the 2D side, if you get a bad picture, um, it can be annoying and unpleasant. But on the 3D side, you get a bad picture. It can really destroy and take away from the narrative, and in the worst case, even hurt. And this is nothing your audience should ever have to be able to deal with. Of course, there's also a business reason for this entire discussion. While your audience may not understand what was wrong or why, they certainly know when something doesn't look good on the screen, and even worse when it hurts. And they will vote with their feet the next time they go to see a 3D film and remember that they didn't like what they saw in your cinema. Having anything less than great 3D on your screen makes no sense for your business. Now, great 3D is what you're gonna see here all week. Um, and the, this is also the result of many days of setup and testing by some of the best and most experienced techs in the industry. So the result is naturally is, you know, absolutely satisfactory and stunning 3D. So this is great for us here looking at those shows, but certainly not something practical that we can do in an everyday theater. So what can you do to put great 3D on your theater screens? It all starts during the system installation and setup. This is the time focused on learning the system, learning all about 3D, so you have a good, solid, rudimentary understanding of how your system works, what 3D, how the 3D is delivered, and you can recognize and describe any particular problems to technical support personnel over the phone. Try and get a local expert at your location, or even more than one. Uh, these people will be very helpful in the long run. 
the more you know and understand about your 3D system and how it works, the better. It's just that simple. So once the installation techs leave your theater, you're suddenly on your own and looking after a 3D screen that's just become the most important house in your entire complex. So what you should be looking at in order to keep it that way. <coughs> We've already heard from both of our first two presenters that 3D brightness is one of the main issues. Uh, and certainly I support that all along. 3D loves brightness and theater operators are exactly the opposite way. Um, along with the brightness comes larger lamp sizes required to run at higher power and more electricity. Personally, I think for the extra bit of uh, ticket cost that your audience is paying, um, it's much wiser to give them the brightest and most high quality 3D spirits you can by keeping the light up. You also want to keep the 3D system clean. Now, every system has you know, its own areas where dirt and other things can get in the way. But you know, look at the chain from the projector, through the optics, through the port window, screen, glasses. Each and every one of the steps needs to be kept in top shape, clean and working. You also want to look at your system upgrades for your digital. Uh, your digital server and your digital projector. Uh, often over the course of the year, the manufacturers will release upgrades that do affect and do improve the 3D delivery. And finally, staff training and know-how is of utmost importance. Spread the word around your theater, use those experts, make sure everybody understands what good 3D looks like. Another big moment of truth is each new 3D film opening. Try not to load the film in your server, you know, with no time left to look at it, but to even do a check screen before it comes out. This, this is usually the case when something can go wrong and usually will. Also, use the 3D picture setup charts that are provided by the film distribution company, because they really are important in terms of setting that print up properly on your screen so that it can be delivered the way that creative people on the film production side want it to. If you haven't run 3D for a while, make sure to reacquaint the staff with uh, all the important 3D requirements. Everybody knows what they're looking for, how to run it. And finally, get your glasses ready, get them clean, get them powered up, get them stocked up, whatever kind of glasses you have, make sure they're ready to go and uh, there's no last minute rushing. So all this leads into my last point. You really have to look at the 3D picture. Is it clear? Is it comfortable? Does it look great? If you can't pass this test when you're doing your first screening of a new print, then start asking a lot of questions quickly. For those of you with multiple screens in your complex, they should all look the same and just as great as, as the other. So, other things you can do on the daily 3D quality monitor. What, what I would suggest, just from a practical side, uh, once the new show is, is launched, somehow ensure that it's going to look good day in, day out, show by show. This isn't a huge problem with digital 3D, but when there is a problem, you just have to it. So as I mentioned earlier, everything you need is on the screen. All you have to do is check on a consistent basis and use a regular process. Your staff needs a little training and some basic tools, and it can be as simple as just a regular pair of 3D glasses. You know, all they have to do is go into the theater every morning while the first show is on the screen, put on the glasses. Is it clear? Is it comfortable? Does it look great? Is it as good as it was yesterday? As good as they remember the week before? You want to get that answer. Another thing they can do, they just pull the glasses away a bit. Look through each lens separately. Wiggle it around a bit. Is the image in the lens clear, colorful, bright, as opposed to the kind of, uh, you know, frosted uh, double image, 3D image that you get on the screen uh, without the glasses. Look at the other eye, look at, compare the two together. As Bill mentioned, they have to look the same. Just make sure it's working. Now, you know, if you do that every morning, you're off to a good start. Further beyond that, um, you know, do as much checking as you think is practical, but uh, no checking, no amount of checking is ever too much.
Now, also remember, uh, bad 3D is going to leave a very memorable and long impression on your audience, and that isn't worth the agony for either of you. So if you do receive a complaint, take it seriously. Have someone go in and try and see if it's real. Try and understand it. Own the right people to give you help and get it uh, looked after as quickly as possible. So just to wrap things up, you know, great 3D is perfect left and right images to each eye. It's bright. There's little or no crosstalk cross or disparity between each left and right image that make things hurt. The great 3D is exactly what you want to have on your screens. Thank you very much.